This kid is a problem. And uh, just, you know, submit to the clinch from oh! So that's to his credit. In boxing, any up-and-coming young star who walks into the scene with devastation and skill can often be called the next pound-for-pound -pound star or world champion. But watching David Morrell Jr., you can't help but be impressed by his talent and dog approach when he comes under those bright lights in the squared circle. Most Cuban fighters are typical outboxers who prioritize using their jab, defense, and counterpunching alongside very good linear and lateral footwork, a style that has been perfected for amateur boxing. However, when it comes to the pros, it's the entertainment business, and it's about giving the fans what they want. In most cases, blood and knockouts. Morel Jr. who is looking to show who's boss. Big shot for Morel, and an uppercut down goes Rankin. In today's video, I'm gonna give you my analysis on the Cuban's boxing style and techniques and why he's truly the boogeyman from 168 to 175 pounds. So on that note, let's get right into it. Every now and again, it's nice to see fighters going against the norms of the rest of their countrymen's typical fighting style. Morel Jr. coming from the Cuban school of boxing and fighting from the young age of seven has helped give him all the potential in the world. He won the World Youth Championships in 2016 while finishing his very impressive amateur career with a record of 135 for two. His lone setbacks were against his countryman, Julio Cesar La Cruz, who won two golds at the Olympics and has won five world championships, alongside Canada's Harley David O'Reilly, a loss which he later avenged. Instead of staying in Cuba and potentially going to the Olympics one day, he made the tough decision to leave his family and defect to America to fulfill his dreams of becoming a world champion. A decision many of the great Cuban fighters throughout history have made and one that has no guarantee to pay off. Cuban fighters never had the biggest fan bases in the States compared to other Latin groups and due to their style of fighting usually not being a thirst for blood have sometimes been considered boring by some. But for Morel, I see something very different as he's always looking for the knockout or to land a big punch. And even outside boxing, going against the norm. For example, instead of staying closer to Florida where a large Cuban community is based, he went against the norm by going to Minneapolis to work under Ronnie Shields. A bold move that could pay off later down the line. But now let's take a look at his fighting style and what makes him so dangerous for those from 168 to 175 pounds. As mentioned before, Morel is very well schooled due to his extensive amateur background. And being a southpaw has given him a unique problem for most of his opponents. But overall, I would have to say he's an aggressive boxer puncher. And even looking at his amateur days, you can tell he likes to be the one applying pressure and pushing the pace. Interestingly, he compares his style to past greats. He said, I would describe my style as a mixture of my four favorite fighters. I'm talking about Mike Tyson, Roy Jones, Sugar Ray Leonard, and Roberto Duran. And from studying him, I feel he does have a well-rounded combination of these four legends in some shape or form. He's displayed power, speed, flashiness, athleticism, and ring IQ in his professional bouts, making him an exciting prospect and contender. However, we do need to see him in there with higher caliber opposition before he can really say he's the real deal. Now for David's stance, he is a southpaw as I said. Immediately, you can tell he has very good fundamentals in place just by looking at his footwork as he has great balance between both feet, helping him naturally transition from offense to defense and vice versa. Maybe a bit more on the wider side, but you can tell he knows this is a game of inches. And because he has taken a much more aggressive approach since turning pro, he will tend to walk down his opponents using a high guard as it helps him get into range so he can get off his combinations. You will often see him square up at times so he mainly generates more power in his hooks while giving him better ability to bob and weave, which I guess against better opposition, he'll need to be careful doing this. And maybe this is just his inner Mike Tyson coming out. From studying him, I noticed he quite often goes into a half guard shoulder roll, dropping that lead hand when he's at a mid to long range, usually waiting to fire out his southpaw lead hand as an up jab to 
keep his opponents guessing on what will come next. Defensively, he'll use this to give him better flexibility in terms of rolling punches or using waist movement. However, occasionally he can get ahead of himself, dropping that lead hand at close range and squaring up, as I just mentioned, which has seen him get countered and caught out at times. And this is something I'm sure his trainers and Shields and Bob Santos will want to correct to get him more disciplined once the opposition starts to step up. He'll also occasionally switch up to an orthodox stance momentarily to give him a better positional advantage to attack, which quite often catches his opponents off guard. Hey, you know, I call him the Matrix because his movement is like the Matrix. It's not easy to hit. And I'm, ta I'm talking Morel. Now, for Morel Jr.'s jab, he usually likes to throw this with power. There's no messing about this. And because he throws very heavy jabs for the most part, it immediately puts his opponent on the defensive by covering up or pushing them back. And because he is a southpaw, he's mainly faced orthodox fighters to date. And a typical occurrence in lefty-righty fights is the lead hand battle. Morel though opts not to be constantly probing with it all the time, but instead will usually throw out the double probe jab to try get his opponent to throw within his rhythm, and will intelligently wait so he can throw his jab over the top of their jab. Or he simply uses this to continue his pressure to push them back, so he can throw that left hand behind it. Morel will also mix this up by going to the body when he's pushing back competitors, but from just watching him so far, I feel maybe he does headhunt a bit too much at times. But I'm sure when the opposition continues to step up, we'll see much more variation to the body. The Cuban also loves to throw that lead right hook, usually to help him set up the powerful left hook or straight using the natural transfer of weight to generate more power. From a distance, he sometimes throws this as a slap hook to knock away the guard or even direct his opponent onto his left. And of course, he will use the lead hand to set up a very powerful straight left cross, almost using the lead hand as a way to line up the target. In a way, he does really remind me of how former light heavyweight champ Adonis Stevenson would also set up his opponents with the lead hand before unleashing a thunderous left cross. And of course, he loves to throw a sneaky lead right uppercut when on the inside to mainly occupy the guard before immediately going around the guard with the left. Overall, I have to say, he's shown great versatility with it thus far, which is very promising and he'll need to do this when facing tougher opposition. Now when you think of Cuban fighters, one of the first things I think of is their amazing footwork. And both Cuban boxing footwork and their national dances such as the rumba share a foundation on rhythm and music. Rumba dancers sway to the beat of the drums, while Cuban boxers synchronise their footwork with the fight's rhythm, showcasing the fusion of rhythmic elements in both domains. They have subtle movements that help them get advantageous positions, but they usually move with grace and agile footwork to evade opponents and set up their attacks, while putting on a show. For David Morel, he overall does have a more fundamental approach with his footwork, which is combined with his defensive skills and upper body movement. Offensively, he usually looks to get that lead foot domination by getting on the outside of his opponent's foot, so he can set up his attacks, but also take him off the center line. This is something he's always looking to do against orthodox fighters. When he does get pushed back, he'll usually look to do a subtle quick L step to reset himself and once again try to apply pressure and get on the outside position. When he is on the outside, he does occasionally bring his feet together which could spark an opportunity for future opponents to attack. But he'll usually always try to get back to that wider bladed stance. And he'll sometimes bring his back leg around when on the outside, or when throwing a jab, which is technically wrong, but no doubt due to the Cuban school of boxing, his footwork is very well balanced, and so far, he's pulling it off. The likes of Ali would do this, and another southpaw, Pernell Whitaker, would do this often. Morel also can be seen to be a bit of a showman with his footwork, bringing in elements of Cuban dance to show off. Who doesn't like an alley shuffle from time to time? Now obviously it can act as a distraction. Morel tends to do this when he's feeling confident and when he's about to go on the offensive. Another thing I've seen from studying him is just his subtle foot feints, where he'll give his opponent a look that he's about to lunge in to engage before immediately doing the same but attacking, helping him add more unpredictable spice to his game. 
Now defensively for Morel, a lot of this comes down to his footwork and positioning as I've just discussed. He can quickly transition between attack and defense, as he's more naturally a boxer than he is a puncher after all. His upper body and head movements are also very good, and he's very elusive at dodging all punches thrown at him. He'll often bend using his waist to give him better flexibility, or use a Philly Shell stance to roll punches, or even use his backhand to parry away shots. But as mentioned earlier, he'll often use the higher guard when closing the distance, and he does seem to be more comfortable using this. He also uses a higher guard to cover up when his competitors try pushing him back too. While he'll sometimes rely on his reflexes to just slip punches and wait to counter back. And I've noticed when he throws his hooks, he is also showing more defensive responsibility, making sure to roll and take his head off the center line after throwing, which is obviously very important when it comes to avoiding a return punch from your opponent. And so far we've also seen Morel resort to applying pressure and walking down his opponents to cut off the ring, and this is exactly where he wants you, as he'll then look to put together his powerful combinations. When he's walking opponents down, he'll also look to give different looks and feints, whether that be using the high guard, probing with the jab, using upper body and head movement, quite often making them miss by slipping their punches before countering back himself. And once he's got them on the ropes or corners, he'll look to fight on the inside at times, and he does look to fight out the clinch, throwing powerful short sharp shots before the ref tries to break, and is always alert and ready to attack. However, he's still in my opinion better when boxing on the outside with a bit of space to attack and set up his left cross, or even his right hook. Now I know it's still very early in Morel Jr's career, but you can tell he's very much a hunter in his fights thus far. For the most part, he's always looking to set up a big shot, and he's very creative in the ways he does so. Whether that be a timely uppercut, using the jab to set up the straight left, throwing a flurry of powerful place punches, or beating you up on the inside. He's got all the tools in the box to finish you off. And he's not just looking to land one big punch all the time. David is always looking for different routes of attack so he can hurt you and create openings. And don't be surprised if the knockouts continue to rise over the years. When fighters make such an impact early in their career, they can be seen as the boogeyman and struggle to get their profile fights because potential opponents are reluctant to face them as they don't want to screw up their own record. And these fighters may not generate as much revenue or not as marketable as others. However, when these fighters do eventually face off against each other, it can lead to highly anticipated and potentially historic matchups in the sport. Personally, Morel, I think, can go all the way. I feel his biggest problem to date has probably been the lack of opposition, no disrespect to who he's faced, but I think it is clear to see he's just a level above all the opponents he's faced to date. Obviously, the fights with the likes of Canelo Alvarez or David Benavidez interest me the most, or even a move up to light heavyweight could be a way forward for the Cuban to get a shot at a title. After all, he's a big 168 pounder at six foot one and a 78 inch reach and he's still in his 20s. He has so much promise and potential. However, as I just mentioned, there are still gaps in his game and he does take a lot of risks at times, such as him squaring up a bit too much when he has you on the ropes. And I'm sure his trainers like Ronnie Shields and Bob Santos will be looking at that side for when the big opposition comes. But I honestly only see him getting better if he's managed correctly going forward. But yeah guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Morel Jr. Do you think he's the boogeyman at 168 pounds? And do you think he can go all the way to the top? And how do you think he would get on against the likes of Canelo Alvarez or David Benavidez? I'd love to know. As always guys, thanks so much for watching. This has been Jamie from Boxing Life and I'll see you in the next one.